not been a good place for him over the last four years and that he and his wife will soon be moving from the Bloomington area. In a moment, Bob Knight, live. Campus of Indiana University in Bloomington. Bob, let's start three national championships, a gold medal at the Olympics, more than 700 career victories. On the flip side, your own university, where you've worked for 29 years, has detailed a pattern of misbehavior, and it says you finally crossed the line. Still, did you ever think you would be fired? Well, uh, I think, Jeremy, when, uh, when I first came to Indiana, uh, I, I really didn't know what the future would hold. I, I'd coached at the military academy for, uh, for eight years, six years as a head coach, and w when I came here, uh, this was a real experiment for me and a real chance to do some things with the game of basketball that uh, that I thought I wanted to do and I think for a long period of time I, I think maybe I don't know I, I worked through uh, two presidents a lot of vice presidents uh, a lot of members of the board of trustees uh, and and really had had no problems at all uh, occur uh, with these people during that time with with those people and I think I had a an understanding with them I think that they uh, understood some things I was trying to do I, I think that um, we were able to get uh, I think together a lot of things uh, done and, and during that time I think maybe maybe one time with with Jerry Colangelo a really close friend of mine who's the president of the Diamondbacks and, and the Suns I thought about maybe leaving Indiana and, and going somewhere else um, but but not uh, but did you ever think they would get well you? if you'll give me a chance I'll get to that <laughs> uh, um, but I, I just didn't uh, really didn't consider that I thought I would stay here and coach till till I was done coaching uh, which I'm certainly not now. I mean, there's no way I'm done coaching. But uh, in, in recent years, uh, things have changed. Uh, administration has changed. Uh, the athletic department has changed. And, and for some people, that may be good for me. It, it hasn't been. It, it just has not been uh, the kind of situation that I've been used to here. And, and uh, I've known for, uh, I think, several years that this was not the same situation that uh, that I've been in, and and as recently as July, uh, I gave some serious consideration toward uh, uh, another job, uh, and and have in the last couple of years. But you mean the job at Delaware? Well, no, not that, not that. That was not that was consideration after uh, the fact. But uh, I, I don't think that that uh, my thinking about another job. Uh, quite overrode the feeling that I had for Indiana University and the kids that we had here, the kids that were coming, the kids that have been here, what we've put together and built here at Indiana. I wanted to, more than anything, wanted to see us uh, get back. Uh, and, and we've had some periods. I don't we've We've never been mediocre. We've always been really good or pretty good as a team. And uh, more than anything, I wanted to see us get back uh, to being really good. And, and I kind of hung on to that thought uh, for several years now, uh, four or five years, and probably uh, should have gone somewhere else. Simply be, and, and, and there would be somebody that was a better fit as a basketball coach for this administration and these people than I am. And there's a place somewhere that's a better fit for me as a basketball coach. Uh, see those hands, Jeremy? That <laughs> haven't lost haven't lost quick hands. Uh, and there's some place that's a better fit for me as a basketball coach uh, than Indiana is right now. Are you embarrassed? You've been fired in a very public fashion. Your job taken away from you, a job you just said you'd hoped to have until you gave it up. Are you embarrassed? No, not at all. What I am is proud. I am really proud of, of what our basketball program turned out at Indiana. I mean, I'm not going to single this player out and that player out because I miss players, but but I'm just so proud of the kind of kid that we've turned out here and the kind of men that these kids uh, have developed into. I'm really proud of the accomplishments that these kids had. Uh, this is something that that with uh, past administrators, John Ryan and Bill Orwig were the two people that, that hired me to come here. And I think they've been uh, the two people that probably more than anybody else because 
they got me started. And, and a guy that's been with me, uh, a former administrator since day one, was, was Ed Williams. So there are people that have just been a part of this. But, but it's been the players and all the coaches that we've had here. And, and we've put together over the years kind of woven a, uh, an atmosphere of, of success academically, uh, athletically, uh, after graduation, that I think all of us are really proud of. So that's how I feel about what's happened here uh, uh, over all the years. And now uh, that, that my time at Indiana has been terminated, uh, and, and uh, my mistake, I, I think, was just kind of overstaying uh, the situation. Uh, the situation changed, people changed, uh, and uh, uh, we have a different philosophy. We have a different approach to things. We look at things differently. I think we, in, I think we interpret words differently, even. Well, do you regret now, Bob, that considered, that you didn't resign on May 15th, that you didn't say, all right, I've had enough. These conditions are conditions I cannot live up to. You know, your own wife, your own son said you should resign. Why yeah, didn't you? Well, they did. And, and you know, I don't know. Maybe I was dumb. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, that's a possibility. Well, and it's not an unusual thing for me to be dumb on occasion. But that, uh, I think in, in retrospect, that's exactly the thing uh, that I should have done. But, but I didn't do it because of the kids that we have here. These kids came here uh, because of me. Uh, they came here to play for me. Uh, and I felt this in my mind. So I thought that I have an obligation to these kids. I, I think these kids uh, understand today that, that uh, they've got a chance to go out and still play. I mean, whether I'm here or not, they can have a really good basketball team. They can enjoy it. They can play. And, and I think uh, for my sake, uh, I think it would have been far better for me, recognizing as I did uh, long before May, that this just wasn't a situation for me, that I should have just gotten out of the situation. You didn't get out. You didn't resign. Instead, you agreed to the terms of the zero tolerance policy. What did zero tolerance mean to you? Nobody ever explained that to me, Jeremy. I, what did it mean in, to you? In spite of, zero, let me, I asked the vice president of the university as recently as last Thursday. I said, can you explain zero tolerance to me? And he looked me right in the eye and said, no, I can't. So zero tolerance to me then, when I'm left on my own to interpret it. But me, president Brand said he made it very clear. He made it very clear the types of behavior that would be acceptable and those that wouldn't be acceptable. Well, Is he not telling the truth? Well, he may think he did, but I have no idea what zero tolerance is. There was never anything said what if I get a technical foul in a game? Is that zero tolerance? Did you ask is, him for a definition? Uh, I asked a lot of people for, as I said, I just three, as recently as last week, asked the vice president for the definition of zero tolerance. I asked uh, Dr. Williams, who's a former executive vice president, for a definition of zero tolerance. Uh, and, and he was a guy that was kind of working back and forth between the president's office and me. For what reason? I really don't know. That was not my choice. That was the president's choice. But he had no idea of the definition of zero tolerance. You said you wanted to set the record straight concerning the reasons that President Brand gave on Sunday for firing you. Uh, we want to play some of his comments for you, have you respond to them. The first thing he said was that you displayed an unwillingness to work with your superior in the athletic department, the athletic director, Clarence Doninger. There was a continued unwillingness by Coach Knight to work within the normal chain of command at the IU athletics department. I personally asked Coach Knight on May 13th to resume the normal chain of command with athletics director, Clarence Doninger. And he's adamantly refused to do that. There was nothing that came up from May 13th to the president to the present where I need to interact with the athletic director in any way. Nothing was scheduling, recruiting, budget, anything. Uh, the assistant athletic director, uh, uh, Steve Downing, a former player of mine, worked with things. We, uh, my contract calls for me to control basketball and to run basketball, which I did. There was never a reason for me to ask of anything, nor was anything ever asked of me so, during that time. So is that a fabrication? Well, I don't know whether, he, he may have a feeling that I didn't work with the athletic director. There may be something that uh, uh, 
he thought I should have done. Perhaps he thought I should have had weekly meetings. with. I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. All I know is that we were able to conduct basketball since May 13th, whenever or whatever the date was, without the necessity for doing anything with the athletic director during that time. Nor at any time since May 13th has the athletic director ever asked me to sit down, to talk, told me that he needed to see me or for any reason. President Brand gave another reason. Another reason uh, he said well, there was before, inappropriate. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Let's, let's just get to this one, Bob, and then we'll come back. No, Jeremy, he said there wait, was an just incident. wait a second. Uh, whatever, uh, and what we're talking about here is interpretation. Maybe he interprets sure. something one way, I interpret another way. And communication has not been particularly good here. When I, no, I uh, have not heard from the athletic director, nor have not heard personally from the president, then, uh, and, and I didn't try to attempt to talk to either of them. Well, either. why not? Well, there wasn't really any need to in my mind. But you just said you didn't know anything about what the zero tolerance policy would I, entail. I, didn't you have some curiosity? Oh, I asked several people. But you said and, you didn't. Why didn't you ask the president or the well, athletic director? Well, I'm, I'm asking people that are emissaries of the president. And when they don't know, I don't know where they go to get it. They had an opportunity to go get it themselves and bring it back to me. I mean, don't you think he would answer your phone calls? President Brand? Or, and I would certainly answer his. Another reason President Brand gave for firing you was an incident with a female official at the university, a university lawyer. You were having a discussion, I understand, concerning the $30,000 fine that the university had imposed. Here's what President Brand had to say. There has been an incident in the recent past in which Coach Knight verbally abused a high-ranking female university official in the presence of other persons. This angry outburst in his office was completely unnecessary and inappropriate. Bob, is that true? The person he's talking about is Dottie Frapwell, who's mm -hmm. a university attorney. Uh, we were in my office uh, with another attorney discussing a matter completely unrelated uh, to any of this. Uh, Dottie is a person, and, and I've told her this, and I've told other people this, that I had a lot of respect for and that I genuinely liked. Um, I got a letter from Dottie uh, outlining how this fine was going to be paid. And the letter had very erroneously uh, figured out the, the way to pay it in terms of what it was eventually going to cost. And without getting into all the details there, we had to go, uh, uh, four di my accountant had to go four different times to make sure this was straightened out correctly. But did you uh, scream uh, at her, Bob? Would you let me finish, Jeremy? I'll let you finish. Thank but, you. Thank but you. The, the gist of this is, did you treat her in a manner that you should Jeremy, be Jeremy, I'm trying to explain that if you'll just give me the chance. Go ahead. All right, now, uh, when, when uh, I was with Dottie in, in the office, uh, I had at that time, I think, developed something of a negative attitude uh, toward the entire administration for a number of reasons. And I'm sure it came through there. We went through what I thought we had to do. I asked Dottie if there was anything else that I had to do with her. Uh, do you need me for anything else? Is there anything that needs to be done with you? Have we done everything with you? And uh, she said that we had, and I said, well, then I would like to just finish this with the other attorney. And I would just as soon that you leave the office and leave the two of us finish it. Now, if, if that's abuse, then that's abuse. That's all that it was. Depend, uh, depending upon who interprets that. There were five people mm -hmm. outside the door of my office. But you're suggesting now that you didn't scream at her. I did not scream at her. I did not yell at her. Did you I swear did not at her? No, I did not use profanity. I did not talk in a voice any higher than I'm talking to you now. If that is interpreted by anybody as abuse, that's their interpretation. The university spokesman, Christopher Simpson, said you were abusive. He wasn't there, but he obviously spoke to Dottie Frapwell. Well, that's his interpretation. We're moving on to another comment that President Brand made on Sunday. He gave another reason and, for your and, dismissal. And, and, and he happens to be a guy that puts a lot of interesting spins on a lot of things for a lot of people. Uh, on Friday, uh, a student, a freshman at this university, Ken Harvey, accused you of accosting him at Assembly Hall. Uh, you held a press conference later that day in which you denied uh, speaking rudely to him or bruising his arm which is what he said had happened, that he said there were scratches on his arm. Let's hear President Brand's description of that event. We have a well-publicized incident in which Coach Knight had a confrontation with a 19-year-old IU student in front of Assembly Hall. 
The IU police are investigating this matter and have complete, completed their preliminary findings. They have talked to seven people and have two more persons with whom to talk, but we believe they have settled the factual aspects of the case. The coach reached out and initiated physical contact with the student on his arm, and the two had, according to varying accounts, an uncomfortable exchange. It is not in dispute that the coach reached out and grasped the young man's arm in an unwelcome fashion. The severity of the act is in dispute, however. Bob, you already said on Friday that the, the contact, in your opinion, was not inappropriate, that you did not bruise him, that you took him lightly by the elbow, and then you told him that he should be more polite, address you as Coach Knight or Mr. Knight. But considering the zero tolerance policy, considering your history, considering everything, the fact that you wanted this job, why did you go over and touch him at all? Because I think that's something, Jeremy, that I would probably do under the same circumstances tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. Um, and, and right along with the zero tolerance policy is, is something else that, that, that comes into play. Um, there were some comments apparently made that uh, I had refused to speak at previously scheduled uh, varsity club outings. There were no previously scheduled varsity club outings, first of all, none. Uh, Your contract at, stipulates that you appeared four and at, you were at, going to appear at four, four times. And two of them must be varsity club outings. I had in June participated in two different varsity club outings. Now, that leaves two outings for me to participate in. Uh, at the advice of my lawyer, I stuck to those four outings, those four necessary outings. And he told me that I just could not afford to expose myself to these outings. You've mentioned right. zero tolerance. I, I look at zero tolerance. I didn't teach a class this year that I've taught for 28 years. I'm the only coach in basketball or football in the Big Ten that has taught a class in the last 20 years. And I didn't teach it because if you're a student and you don't like something I've said to you, you get a C and you thought you should have gotten an A. Is that a violation of zero tolerance? But Bob, that's what, that's what makes this situation on Thursday at Assembly Hall even more mystifying that you were so cognizant of the possibilities that you said last year you knew people were going to bait you and then you took the bait, did you not? Jeremy, what I did with that student was simply try to teach him something about manners. And I said I'd do it tomorrow and I'll do it the next day. And he day. said he was being Cause, rude. Because that's, that's the way that I have brought it up. Well, it's nice that you would say that. Uh, because all I said was, son, I'm not, hi, Knight. I'm Coach Knight or Mr. Knight. And I don't address people by their last name and you shouldn't either. Always remember that with the elders. Now, Jeremy, let me finish what I was saying before you interrupted me. So rude. We're, we're going back to uh, uh, the situation uh, where... Uh, You're talking about the university uh, alumni meetings? The, the four meetings, okay? So on the advice of my attorney, uh, 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 I spoke at the four only. Usually I've spoken at more than four, maybe six, eight, whatever. But just four this time. The other two that I chose were a cancer fundraiser with the Southern... Indiana Alumni Association, and a speech to the student body in Assembly Hall that I've given many, many times over the years to show the students, thank the students for the support they give the basketball team, encourage them to continue to giving that support, which I hope they'll continue to do right now. So those are my four things. I'm not sure how you can argue against raising money for cancer or speaking to the students. Now, uh, on the advice of counsel, as I said, those were the four spots. There were no regularly scheduled alumni uh, luncheons in Chicago, Indianapolis, or Bloomington. Those schedules had not even been set yet. So you're saying this is a false pretense for your fire? Uh, well, I, that, One that, of several. that statement is false because let, let, let a lady me... came into my office mm -hmm. and asked me in front of my wife, what dates do I want to speak in Chicago and Indianapolis? This was the 1st of August, and I explained to her that I wasn't going to speak at those luncheons and why. And the same thing uh, with the Bloomington luncheon, which would be fit right into the speech that I would make to the students, and anybody wanting to come was welcome to. Just one last thing about Ken Harvey. Ken Harvey, the young man, 19-year-old from a community about 20 miles from here, has received now numerous death threats. 
he's been advised by the police to leave town, which in fact he has. His uh, image has been burned in effigy on campus. Don't you feel an obligation now to use your bully pulpit? Your words have impact in this community to say, lay off Ken Harvey. Hey, I, I'd be the first person to say that. This, this was a kid, like I was caught in some circumstances. Here's a kid caught in some circumstances that I think was really flustered by, by what took place. And, and I, maybe he just came upon me very quickly, recognized me, was surprised to see somebody that he was used to seeing on television. I, I, would, I think it would be uh, ridiculous to associate anything uh, other than uh, surprise and, and being flustered uh, with, what this, uh, with what this youngster uh, had to say. And I would certainly hope uh, that uh, anything uh, uh, that would be as untoward as what you've just mentioned would cease very quickly. Are you going to mention that when you address the student body tomorrow night? Well, you have to come and listen. I didn't think that I was scheduled to make my speech to the student body here tonight. That's what had been previously reported. One other thing, Christopher Simpson, the university spokesman, said you were told repeatedly, constantly, that each step along the way, each of these reasons Miles Brand gave for firing you, put you on thin ice. Were you aware that, of that? that? Did they tell you? That from Christopher Simpson is totally untrue. They never warned you. Totally. None From of these Christopher incidents. Simpson is totally untrue. So you had no idea as these incidents, as they said, were accumulating. The incidents, the reasons that Miles Brand gave on Sunday, they never warned you. You asked me if Christopher Simpson had, had kept me informed no, of no, that. No, no, I didn't ask you if yes, Christopher Simpson. Yes, you did. Said, no, I said Christopher Simpson said you had been informed. I didn't say did he, well, did anyone. Well, he did not, nor did anyone else. Coach, thanks very much. We'll take a break right now. When we return, we'll discuss Bob Knight's future and the future of Indiana University. Bob, the meeting Sunday night at Assembly Hall, you flew back from your fishing trip. You addressed your troops at Assembly Hall. It was an emotional meeting. What happened? Well, I just told the kids that, that uh, I was no longer going to be the coach. There was no problem in, 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 uh, uh, in that for them, that these guys just had to play and had to play basketball and had to... Uh, uh, look at their futures and, and I had told them uh, the first time we got together after school started that this was a team that could be a very very good team uh, we've had some really good additions made to that team and I had said then uh, that they could be good and I told them on Sunday that they there was no reason that they couldn't be just as good as I thought they could be how difficult was it to address them as their coach for the last time? Well, you know, I, I would have liked to have uh, been addressing them as to what we were going to do the next week, but uh, uh, I've been in front of teams uh, uh, almost all my life, and uh, the difficulty was in that, that these were kids that we had worked really hard uh, to get together to, to play. And, and now, um, as an example, I'd spent all summer with an offensive set. Um, and, and it, in my mind, while I'm fishing or traveling, thought, who's going to play here and who's going to play here and, and who's the best guy in this spot to do all the things that we do in our motion offense, but, but do them in a little more defined way. And uh, now I won't be able to do that with these kids, but I'm looking for kids that I can do it with. I, I, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I haven't retired. You know, uh, I'm an unemployed teacher right now and I'm looking for a place to teach. And I'm looking for, I wanna see how this offense works. I wanna see how some thoughts I have on, on defense work. I mean, I, there are too many things that, that I have yet to explore about the game of basketball. How important is it to you, you're only 117 victories away from Dean Smith's record, to break the record, to be the winningest college basketball coach of all time? Totally unimportant. It kind of interesting. Really? Th Not it, at all? Kind of, no, I could care less about that. I've never cared about those things. Some guys brought some stuff from my locker today, and it was kind of interesting. My son, Pat, who I think is the, is the real victim in this whole thing. I mean, Pat has just worked very, very hard and very well. Uh, helping us recruit these kids, putting them in the right frame of mind, getting them together. And now Pat, uh, in the beginning of a career, wants to coach, and uh, uh, he's been dismissed from his job along with me. But he's, coach, let me finish, Jeremy. But, but coach, he's the victim in this. Yeah, but Pat is the victim in he, this he's now. He's the victim, but if you had abided by the rules, would he have been the victim? Would he still have his job? I don't think I had any chance to abide by the rules. Why not? Uh, let's get back to Pat, okay? Now, 
with Pat and, and our situation where it was, uh, now we have to find another place. But again, before you interrupted me, what I, uh, what, and you have a real faculty for doing that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. No, I don't think it's anything to really be too proud of myself. Uh, I think I, I when I talked say, Bob, about Pat. Bob, you came here to do an interview. I'm asking you questions. When I talked, to, well, then let me finish the okay. answer. Is that okay, go Jeremy? Ahead. Is that fair enough? Please go right Have ahead. I interrupted your questions yet? Yes. No, I haven't. You've interrupted my answers with your questions, and then I've tried to get back. So Please let me continue. finish this. You've got a long way to go to be as good as your dad. You better keep that in mind. I appreciate uh, what, uh, what I was trying to say is that Pat came into the house and he said, Dad, he said, let me tell you what I found in the bottom of your locker under some old shirts. He found two basketballs that were marked with my 600th and 700th victories under a pile of old shirts in the bottom of my locker. So I think that indicates to you how important total victories are to me. I spoke to Pat yesterday. He said that you guys had already received several calls. People are interested. Has anyone called you yet? Offering you a job? People have called me. Who? I don't. I don't. Who? Which universities? Which athletic directors? Uh, you know what? It slips my mind at the moment. <laughs> How much do you want to coach again? Well, that's all I want to do. I mean, that's what I am as a coach. If I had to put my occupation on uh, on my passport, it would be teacher. Mm -hmm. Teacher, coach. That's what I am. Uh, I'm looking for a situation uh, like I had for years and years at Indiana, uh, where we turned out great kids, where great kids came here, um, where, where I had a rapport with, with people uh, in, in the administration, where, where we were going down the same path. Uh, and, and I'm sure there, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not right for every administration, and every administration isn't right for me. Very few of us are men for all seasons. Very few of us are St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, and, and I want to coach in the worst way, and, and, and I want to uh, I, I, I want to see more kids come out of our program like the kids that have come out of our program here. I, heck, I've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of years yet to coach, and that's what I'd like to do. Well, tell me, Bob, if an athletic director is watching this, and, and I'm sure many are, why should he hire you? If you couldn't get along with your last athletic director or the current president of Indiana University. Well, I think he should hire me because... I figured it out one time, and I basically have worked for about 43 people. And at, this, at one point, I thought there were three people that I hadn't gotten along with. Now I think there are five out of 43. So over my career in coaching, and I'm talking about superintendents at West Point, uh, commandants, athletic directors uh, that I've had, I've worked for... Uh, I think nine different athletic directors and have gotten along pretty well with seven of them. Uh, superintendents, presidents, 42 people, and I really have gotten along well with 37 of them. So that's a pretty good percentage. Bob, you coached the 1984 U.S. Olympic team to a gold medal. There were two players on that team, Sam Perkins and Wayman Tisdale, who were asked once, if you were an animal, what animal would you be? Sam Perkins said a shark, Wayman Tisdale said a pussycat. Is it possible that they were both right? Could be, or maybe somewhere in between. <laughs> Where do you see yourself on that scale? You know, I never, I never look at myself like others try to, uh, Jeremy. Uh, I, I just uh, uh, have always felt that, uh, that, that I've got to be me. I can't be something that, that someone is trying to construct. I can't be uh, something that I'm not to satisfy uh, uh, people. Uh, uh, I try to be fair. Uh, I try to be honest. Uh, I have a philosophy about things that, that uh, differs from, from people, and I think that's a, a basic problem in this whole situation. Uh, my philosophy and my approach to things is just different uh, than, uh, than some people in, uh, in this situation. Bob, with everything you've achieved in coaching, all of the titles, the gold medals, uh, all of the players you've graduated, the high percentage, which is remarkable, are you concerned about your legacy? Are you concerned that when people think of Bob Knight, they're first going to think of Neil Reed and Jeanette Hartgraves and the circumstances surrounding your dismissal? Well, I think there'll be people that will, might think of, of things like that. Those are two uh, very, very minor functionaries to think about who, uh, uh, again, uh, 
uh, have some problem relating exactly what happened. Uh, I, they, think they the that, I think the people that I think the people that I think the people that yeah, I am saying that to be a, to be factual about it. Uh, but I think the people uh, that uh, evaluate uh, uh, my legacy, as you call it, um, are a lot different than that kind of person. They're they're people that uh, uh, I think. Uh, uh, We'll, we'll, we'll look at what I've done, and, and uh, uh, I have no problem uh, with what I've, with what I've, uh, with how uh, I've worked with kids and what has been turned out from what we've done. Bob, you're a historian. You appreciate history. You know of tragedies. With everything you've done here, do you feel that you are a character now in this this tragic opera, really? I mean, this has the elements of tragedy. Can you appreciate that? See, I don't think there's anything tragic about it. I think it's a, a group of people uh, that didn't particularly uh, get along with a guy and a guy that really couldn't fit in uh, with a group of people. So that group of people needs to go somewhere else. Uh, and that one guy needs to go somewhere else. Let me define tragedy for you. You know, my wife has a really close friend that's undergoing traumatic cancer surgery right now. That's tragedy. No, no, I, What's happened saying... here about a job no. uh, and, 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 and what could take place there, there's nothing tragic no, I in certainly that didn't at all. want to equate this with human tragedy, well, I just wanted but this to, is dramatic tragedy. I just wanted to kind of uh, define tragedy for you. What's next? What do you do this year? Oh, I don't know. I, I, uh, I may go fishing tomorrow. Uh, I may uh, work on my offense tomorrow. Uh, I may go look at uh, some tapes tomorrow. Uh, there's never a day goes by that, uh, that I don't work on basketball, uh, and I'll continue uh, to do that. Bob, thanks very much for your time. That's Bob Knight, the former coach of Indiana University basketball team. Now back to Bob Lee in Bristol. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And how his wife Karen just froze over there, and I said, well, it wasn't in August yet, but it's still cold. And I think once we got into a comfortable setting, it was really the disappointment how since actually May 31st is the last time he heard from Dr. Brand. And since that time, he's never had a phone call until this Friday night at 1030 when he's ready to leave again and go to Canada on another fishing trip. And that disappointment on how all this came about, which led to his firing. And Bob, in my opinion, I think Indiana University, Dr. Brand probably wanted to fire him in May. They couldn't because it was the first time they challenged Knight. And whatever happened in the last 17 weeks, they were determined to end his career coaching right. at Indiana University. He goes to Dr. Brand's home that Saturday evening, a two-and-a-half, three-hour meeting, the meeting that essentially at that moment saved his job. Bob Knight is, by many accounts, a brilliant man. How could you, with your job hanging in the balance, how could he not have looked across and asked Miles Brand, what do you mean zero tolerance? It's almost strange credulity, strange credulity to expect that after four months nobody came to him and he never asked. Bob, he wasn't going to survive under zero tolerance. I said that on our show back on May 30th, that I said, Bob, I know you. You're not going to make it through this. You're not going to know and understand how they want to get you. And believe me, when a corporation has a change in administration, him? yeah, I, I, no, I don't know if they're out to get him. I just don't think he was going to survive no matter what they wanted to do to get him out. Sooner or later, it's going to add up, as you saw with Jeremy, how he defended certain situations, talking to his accountant over the $30,000 fine or putting himself into the four events, where can I go where I can't go? I mean, sooner or later, you get both sides of this, but when people want you out, if it's in corporate America, it gets done behind closed doors. It doesn't go to a public arena. This is no different than when we go back to history and look at President Truman firing General MacArthur over the Korean War, and, and it's the same type of conditions. Well, and the same sort of reaction, but is it possible that in Bloomington, Indiana, there are a lot of people so close to the situation, that they're essentially divorced from the reality that many other people around the country sit here and, and look at the bill of particulars that Miles Brand presented. Is it possible to be objective about this sitting in Bloomington? Well, the most important thing is, Bob Knight, you either love Bob Knight or you hate Bob Knight. And that's what it comes down to. And those that hate him are going to go after. Those that love him are going to defend him. And it's a catch-22. He cannot win at Indiana University. But I can see him taking a year off. And I talked to him today about anger management counseling because if he takes another job that president and athletic director are going to and today we appreciate your report it is still as she said an emotional morning